Chapter 16 is about the law of averages and box models. In this video, we're going to talk about the law of averages. So for problem 144, a very bored statistician tosses a coin 100 times and they get 45 heads. So first of all, if they were to toss the coin 100 times, we would have expected half heads, right? So out of 100 times, we would expect 50 heads. So we expected 50 heads, but we got 45 heads. So when we talk about chance error, we mean how far off is what we actually got compared to what we expected. So we were off by 5 heads. Specifically, we were under by 5 heads. We are under what we expected. But if we talk about an absolute value, then we're just off by five heads. How big is the chance error as a percentage of the number of tosses? Well, we were off by five, and we tossed it a hundred times. So five out of a hundred is 0 .05, which is five percent. So that's how big the actual chance error was. Our chance error was five percent. And then what percentage of heads did he get? He got 45 heads out of 100, which is 45%. Then another board statistician tosses a coin 10,000 times, and he got 4,923 heads. So if he tossed it 10,000 times, we would expect that he would get 5,000 heads. Since it's a fair coin, you expect to get about half heads. So first, how big is the chance error in absolute terms? So we expected 5,000, but we got 4,923. So 4,923 minus the 5,000 is negative 77. So we were off by 77 heads. We were 77 heads below what we expected, so we're off by 77 heads. Now notice the difference between these two problems. In the first one, we were off by 5 heads. Now we're off by 77 heads. But how big was that chance error as a percentage in the number of tosses? Because we tossed it, se or our chance error was 77, but he tossed it 10,000 times. So as a decimal, that's .0077. So if we change it to percent, it's 0.77%. So notice that even though the chance error went up by a lot, so we were off by 5 heads, now we're off by 77 heads, the chance error as a percentage went down. Okay? Because if you toss it 10,000 times, being off by 77 isn't as big of a deal. And what percentage of heads did he get? So 4,923 over 10,000 is 0.4923. So if I change it to a percent, that would be 49.23% heads. So notice which time did we get closer to the expected percentage. Uh, for 100 tosses, we're at 45%. For 10,000 tosses, we are at 49.23%. So let's look at a little theory. Chance error, so if we toss a coin many times, the number of heads is going to be equal to the half of the number of tosses plus some chance error. And the law of averages says that for a large number of tosses, the chance error is likely to be large in absolute terms, but small compared to the number of tosses. So what that means is that when we toss the coin 10,000 times, our chance error went up to 77. So in absolute terms, our chance error was bigger and bigger when we toss it 10,000 times. But as a percentage of the number of tosses, the chance error got smaller. So let's go look at this demonstration. In this demonstration, we can flip a fair coin. So we can flip the coin, and it looks like we got one head, so we put a dot up here for the proportion of heads is 1. We could flip the coin again and again, so let's flip it a few times. 
So notice now we flipped it seven times. Our number of heads is four sevenths, so the proportion of heads is 0.571. Then we can keep flipping our coin. And notice that we're kind of bouncing up and down. This 0.5, half, is how many heads you expect. But notice we're not getting exactly half heads every time because we don't go heads, tail, heads, tails. So sometimes my overall proportion is high, sometimes my overall proportion is low. And I can keep flipping my coin. Let's make it a little bit faster. So we've now flipped it 327 times. So as we kind of bounce and we went up and down and up and down, let's keep flipping it. And so I've now flipped it a thousand times. Notice my number of heads was 516 out of a thousand, so my overall proportion is 0.516. That's pretty close to half. So what you really want to see here is that this is the percentage or proportion of heads, and it kind of bounces around, but as we flip the coin more times, that overall percentage gets closer and closer to 1. Now I could get a new set of trials, so do it with a new coin. And notice this time, all of my flips were, all my proportions were above half. That's okay, so my overall was 0.527, and a new set and I can keep get looking at new sets of 10,000 flips. And notice that we get different results every time. That's very important in statistics. Every time you take a new sample, you're going to get different results. But the thing to remember is that as we get more and more trials or more and more coin flips, our overall percentage gets closer and closer to 1,000. So now I'll come over here and look at the proportion of heads as I flip and get new samples. And notice that though it changes, the overall proportion stays pretty close to 0.5. So the thing that you need to remember and write down in your notes that I would expect you to know for the test is that the more times you flip the coin, the smaller the chance error becomes. as a percentage or compared to the number of tosses. Or we could also say the more times you flip the coin, the actual observed percentage gets closer to the expected percentage. And that's the true takeaway from this lesson. So let's see how to apply that. So again, the law of averages, re just restating it in terms of percentages, the laws of averages says that as the number of tosses increases, the percentage of heads is likely to get closer and closer to 50%. Or in other words, the actual observed percentage of heads is likely to get closer and closer to the expected percentage of 50%. So with this example, John Kerch was a mathematician that was in a war camp in World War II, and he really did toss the coin 10,000 times. Here's a summary of his results. So when he tossed it 10 times, he got a number of heads, and the difference between the number of heads he got and the expected was a negative one. And then by the time he tossed it 100 times, he would gotten 44 heads, and the difference between what he expected and what he got was negative 6. At 500, he would gotten 255 heads, so that gave him a difference of 5. Okay, by the time he got up to 10,000, okay, the difference was 67, but he was at 5,067 heads. And so as the number of tosses increased, the chance error got bigger and bigger. But if you look at the difference between the percentage of heads and the expected 50%, the difference gets smaller and smaller. So here's a graph, which is the difference between the percentage of heads and minus 50%, which is what he expected. Notice it was bigger at the beginning, but as the number of tosses went up, that percentage got smaller and smaller. And just as a final remark here, due to chance error, the percentage of heads is unlikely to be exactly 50%, although it does get closer and closer for a large number of tosses. Now, these examples are like what you're going to have to do on your homework in the exam. 
And for these, there are rules that the textbook has for figuring them out. I just like to draw a picture and think about it each time. So for example, 148, a coin will be tossed and you win $1 if the percentage of heads is between 40% and 60%. Which is better for you, 100 tosses or 1,000 tosses? So for each one, what I do is I say, okay, well, what do I expect as a percentage? I would expect to get 50%. And then I know, just through the law of averages, that when I start off tossing it, I might be kind of high and then low and high and low, and I might bounce around, but as I toss the coin more and more times, I'm going to get closer and closer to 50%. So this might be like 100 tosses here, and this might be our 1,000 tosses here. I draw this first because I know that's what it's going to look like. Now I go back and actually look at the problem and see what I'm supposed to be figuring out. So I win $1 if the percentage of heads is between 40% and 60%. So here's my 40%. Here's my 60%. And I want to be in between that. So when are you more likely to be guaranteed to be in between those two lines, between the 40 and 60%? you're guaranteed or more likely to be in between the lines for higher tosses. So it's better for you to do the 1,000 tosses. Because at 100 tosses, you're more likely to still have some of the percentages be below that 40% or maybe above the 60%. So example 149, now you're going to play a different game in which you win $1 if the percentage of heads is 60% or more. So which is better for you, 100 tosses or 1,000 tosses? So again, we would expect 50% heads. And I might start off low and bounce up high and bounce around. A while, but eventually I'm going to narrow out to my 50%. Get closer and closer to 50%. So here's my 100, here's my 1000. Okay, now let's see what this problem actually wants me to do. So we win a dollar if the percentage of heads is 60% or more. So here's my 60%. And I want to be above 60%, so that seems to be more likely for the low numbers. So I'd be better off with 100 tosses if I'm wanting to get above 60%. For our next example, you play a game in which a die is rolled and you win $1 if the percentage of sixes is 20% or more. So which is better for you, 100 rolls or 1,000 rolls? So we expect, since this is a six-sided dice and there's only one six, we'd expect to get one out of six sixes, or this is 16.66%. So here's my expected 16.66%. And again, you might bounce up and down, but eventually you're going to get closer and closer to your expected value. So here's my 100 rolls. Here's my 1,000 rolls. And we win a dollar if the percentage is 20% or more. So here's my 20%. So when am I more likely to get above 20%? That would be in the beginning, so more likely for 100 tosses. That was supposed to be a 100 there. And our next example, you are betting on tosses of a coin. If the coin lands heads, you win $1. If it lands tails, you lose $1. The last 10 tosses have all been heads. What is the chance that the ne next toss is a head? Well, if our last 10 tosses have been heads, what's the chance that the next toss is a head? Some people would say, not very likely, right? Because you've had all heads, your streak will probably end, and you're more likely to get a tail. But that's not true. The probability of a next toss being heads is 
50%. And the reason why is that if you remember, coin tosses are independent. Okay, that means they don't affect each other. So no matter how many heads you've already gotten, the probability of another head is always 50%. So I'm going to say the probability of the next head, the next toss being a head, is always 50%. And that's what this remark 9 says. So the law of averages does not say that you're due for a win. So if you've played, if you've tossed the coin 10 times and you lost every time, the law of averages does not say that you're due for a win. And the law of averages doesn't change or affect the chance for an individual trial. And I know that's difficult to understand. What we're saying is the overall percentage will get closer and closer to your expected value the more times you do something. But we can't say anything about individual trials. So I might know that overall your percentage of heads will get closer and closer to 50%, but I can't tell you anything about the chance of your next toss being ahead. It's always, well, I can tell you something, it's always 